Now, I wanted to talk a bit about Spotio, right? Um, just why we use it. And what I did on the website, I'll just show you here, is I just, I created an article, it's tcip.org.au slash Spotio. And I just, I put it on there just so it was a reference article for us and for you guys as well. Just, you know, if you're ever wondering, I'm going to keep this up to date, right? So it's going to be our reference article of how we use Spotio as a church. And then obviously Kevin can use it as well. And if any other churches, you know, browse our website and they find it, they can sort of use that system as well and, um, and use it. So one thing this will help us to do as well, like say you have, a, you have somebody that you're inviting to church or somebody that's coming along soul winning, you can refer them to this article too. So I'm going to use this as well. If there are new soul winners that join our church, right? New church members that want to go, I can say, hey, have a read over this article. It'll explain everything about Spodio. And then if you have any questions, you know, then, then, um, you know, then, then we can go from there. So it's just called how we use Spodio for soul winning. It's tcip.org.au slash Spotio. And Spotio basically is a door-to-door -door sales app. It's nothing, and the reason why we use this one and not other ones is because it's the cheapest, <laughs> right? Because the other ones are really expensive. You know, like if you've ever, you probably haven't looked up canvassing apps, but generally they charge per user. But, you know, a bit of a plug for Spotio because we were, I was trialing it because it, number one, it was the cheapest at the time. I think it was 25 US per user, but it worked for, our situation where multiple people could use that one login. So I checked with Trey, who's the owner of Spotio, the app. I said to him, you know, because he doesn't really have a non-profit tier, right? Because for a sales organization, if they spend 25 US dollars or 30 US dollars per rep, I mean, you know, that, that's chump change to them because that rep is bringing in a lot of money, right? So that, that's worth it for them to have this sort of ability. Um, but for us, you know, obviously we're a non-profit organization, you know, that's, that's a sunk cost for us. So I asked him whether he would mind if we used the one login for our whole church, because we don't really care whether we share, share um, pins or not, right? We want to be able to share that information. So he, he just said basically, you know, it's not technically supported, meaning if it ever doesn't work, they're not going to necessarily support it. But if it works, he's fine for us to use it that way. So that's why we use the one login. We just created another login for Kevin. So now there's a, the church in Caloundra has their own login as well. So you'll be able to see the pins on the map if you log in under the church in Punchbowl. Um, but then it's just an easy way for us to separate the numbers so we know what church does what. So that's what this article is going to be. So if you ever want to help me and you can always refer people to this article as well and I'll try and keep it up to date and it'll have everything on here. So I just wanted to talk through it with you guys just so we're all on the same page with why we use this app. Because um, I, I really do and it was funny because when I first, when I was at Lighthouse Baptist Church, right, and back then, the way, with the way we organize the soul winning is the, probably the way every church organizes the soul winning, right? You print out these little paper maps and, uh, you know, you mark them on the map and then you give them out to everyone and then they go out and knock those doors and then they come back and then you have to make sure that you collect up all those maps. And the problem is that you always forget to mark those maps. Some people would go soul winning and they'd go home so they wouldn't give it to you. Some people wouldn't mark the map. You know, and then you'd lose all the contact details, right? Because you'd talk to people and everyone would have all these stories, but then it's not tracked anywhere where you can go back and, and you know, who was that person? Where do they live and whatnot? Um, so that, that, that was really difficult. And I remember talking to uh, a lady that I knew from the Jehovah's Witness Church to ask how they managed it. And she explained to us that the way they do it is they just basically have laminated maps so that they can reuse them, right? They give them out and what. I don't know, they're more high tech now, but uh, that, that's, but it seems that a lot of churches do that. I don't, I don't know how many other churches are sort of using a program like this, but just like any, just like a sales organization, you know, the, the problem is always the paperwork and, and just managing all that. So it's no different with a church, right? When we go door to door soul winning, yeah, we're not selling anything for money, but really, you know, it's like a marketing organization, right? It's like a sales organization. The principles are no different. And, and the, the admin is no different. It's even worse because, because we don't sell anything and we don't bring in that profit, right? Everyone is volunteers. So we want to minimize that amount of admin as much as possible. 
So I've just listed four reasons here. Like why, why do we use a program like Spotty? So number one, it minimizes the organizational admin work required in distributing, collecting, and updating physical soul winning maps. So I want you guys to just think about this because you know, if, you, if you are not an organizer, uh, you, know, you tend to not think like an organizer. And that's the problem in our society as well because people are generally employees and they're generally followers. Right? They're generally sheep, you know, sheep, right? They say sheeple. And because people are generally employees, they're generally followers, they're generally participants, they're not organizers, people are not learning how to think like an organizer, right? They don't think like a leader, they don't think like you know, a manager or a business owner. And you know, we, we ought to, right? Because it makes us more considerate. Because when we think about how hard it is to organize something, then you, when you participate in something, you don't want to make it harder for the organizer because you might think, well, it's just me, it's just one thing that you have to do small. But then from the organizer's perspective, it's like many people that have small requests. So that's why you know, there's systems in place and whatnot, just so it's a bit easier. So same with the paper. Yes, I understand that Spotio makes you have to learn something, learn an app, learn how to input the data, but the benefits far outweigh the cons, you know, in terms of, you know, you have a piece of paper and all that information is lost. So that's number two. So we can analyze the collected data and we can be encouraged by the numbers. I don't know if you guys enjoy it. Like, do you enjoy looking at the numbers? You know, you can see, you can see how many doors we've knocked. You can see like all the different, you can see the breakdown, right? Like you can see the breakdown of how many people we've spoken to, how many times we've preached the gospel, how many people we've gotten saved. I think that's really cool. You know, I, I think it's cool to be able to do that, especially at that granularity. But we, we can only do that because we use Spotio, right? If we didn't use Spotio, we'd have no idea, right? Unless somebody was counting. You know, what they would do um, at Faithful Word, because a lot of you guys haven't been there, but what, what, what Stephen Anderson would do at Faithful Word is every, every church meeting when they get together, he would, he would count up the number of souls saved, right? So he'd say, who went soul winning in the last couple of days? And people would put their hand up and say three and two and whatever. And then he would just tally them up and then I guess he would do that somewhere. So obviously that would work, but that would only tell you the number of souls that got saved. It doesn't tell you how many times you preached the gospel, how many doors you've knocked and all that sort of stuff. So you get that granularity. Um, the other thing I don't like about it as well is that I, I don't like... Um, you know, when it comes to preaching the gospel and stuff, you know, it being about a show of how many I won to the Lord. I just, I don't really like that culture that it creates. I, I, like, I like the culture in a church where we, we are a body here, we're a team, you know, we as, as, a, as a church have won 164 people to the Lord. I think that's the sort of culture that we want to create here. We don't want to create, you know, there's, there's sort of like these guns and it's like, oh, and then you, you, you know, that sort of culture starts making you compare yourself to other people as opposed to realizing you're a part of a body you're making one body work and we want to just make sure that you know as a body part we're not hindering the body right and we're doing our best to be the most effective body part in the body of christ in this church so this kind of keeps it you know just a bit anonymous as well and it's just in the background and then when we look at the numbers we look at it as a whole uh, the other thing that was a benefit to Spotio that we realized um, when we were try when I used to trial it at Lighthouse uh, Baptist Church. And you know, funny story is um, if, if you guys know Michael, right? Like Michael is like one of the biggest advocates now for Spotio. But what you might not have known is when we first started using Spotio at Lighthouse Baptist Church, he did not like it at all. And the reason why he didn't like it is because when when you're used to going soul winning, right, without any responsibility at all for the organizer, right? You've got your map. It's very quick, right? And I'm sure you realize that too. When I say you come to this church, you're like, oh, use Spotio. It slows you down a bit because every door you might have to write something in. Whereas, you know, zealous soul winners, right? They want to knock, nobody's home, go. Knock, nobody's home. No, oh, you're buzzing, nobody's home. No. And, and you're used to that sort of speed of going from door to door. So when you're asked to do something at every door, it slows you down and it's a bit frustrating. But now that you realize the benefits of using this, um, hopefully you realize the benefits, then you don't mind that, that slight delay as you, go from, as you go from door to door. The other thing as well is when we all use Spotio, it actually lets you know where everybody else is. So if you think about it, if you know, like say, uh, you know, your, your wife is with somebody in another block 
and you might need to go, you can see where the dots, you know, where the pins are dropping and you can see where the last pin dropped. So you know that they're either, you know, in talking to that next house or, you know, they're in that area somewhere. So um, it just helps us to, to know where each other is. And, and obviously if, if somebody goes missing, God forbid, you know, you'll know the last pin that they dropped and what time it was dropped. So it helps you to know where people are. And um, uh, yeah, and obviously when it comes to decision making and where we're going to canvas again, and obviously with follow up as well, you know, if you input the people's data at that point, you don't lose it, you know, rather than writing it on a piece of paper and that piece of paper gets lost. So let me just pull up this. Quick time. I realized I could do this with... Oh, there you go. Double, double, yeah, double the dose of Victor. <laughs> Check this out. So one thing I want to show you in TMAP is if you haven't downloaded it already, if you can download it, that's how we keep track of who's going soul winning and how many people are coming to dinner. Again, think like an organizer. You know, I know it's a bit of a hassle. I know it takes a couple of seconds just to like put your RSVP in, but if you can, that'll really help because it really helps me a lot um, when it comes to organizing. And I'll show you what I mean. Like yesterday, we had about eight people come soul winning. And um, if I look here, so if I go to soul winning Saturday, which was yesterday, and we can see all the people that replied yes, now, what you'll notice in, in, in TMAP, when you reply yes, there are like other questions that need to be responded to. So for dinner, it'll ask like how many people are coming, how many children under seven, are you bringing aside? Please answer those questions if they are relevant to you. You know, don't just hit yes and then save and skip them. Because with soul winning, it's especially important because on the Saturday soul winning event, there's an AM and a PM session. So you're, you need to specify what session you're gonna go to. Are you gonna go to the AM, the PM? Can you go to either or both, right? And it's very rare, but some people go both, it'll be good. But if you put either, if you can go to either AM or PM, put either, right? Because then I look at who's going and if there's one person in the PM, then, then go with in the PM, right? So that's, that e that's why there's that either, so that people can see that there's somebody that can go at either time. Now, if I, in team app, you know, there's the yes, the maybe, and the no. What's really cool is, is if you actually answer those questions, AM, PM, either, both, and you click on that yes number, it actually tells you here, like, hey, Victor said either, Michael's AM, Stephanie didn't do it, <laughs> Michael is AM, Luke is AM, and Nathan is AM. So then you can already see in the app when people are going soul winning. So you don't really have to ask, hey, who's going soul winning? You just need to go into team app, see who's RSV, you know everyone who's going soul winning. If you see one person either and you're thinking, is anyone going in the afternoon? You can contact that person and say, hey, do you wanna go in the afternoon with me? Um, and whatnot. So that really helps me organize because then I can start pairing people up because it's really tough like when you're pairing people up and then you have last minute people pull out or, you know, or come because then you, have, you might have to reshuffle things because you know, we don't necessarily send married women with unmarried men or married men and whatnot. So we're trying to like, I'm trying to like pair it up. And, and, and also I have to think about you know, who can talk and who doesn't you know, and you know, that sort of thing. So it kind of helps if we are all using this and it makes it a bit easier. Now in Spodio, We're just changing things up uh, a little bit in terms of I used to, what I used to do is I used to get everyone in teams of four uh, and then you take either side of the street and then go down the street. Uh, I'm, we're going to change that a bit now. So what I've done now is I've sort of colored in blocks on the map because the reason why we're doing blocks now instead of streets, it's just a, a bit easier to piece up the map because sometimes you have really long streets and sometimes you have really short streets and it's a bit harder to mark on the map, you know, this highlight this street, right? Whereas every house sort of sits on a block surrounded by streets. So that's how we're going to do it now. I mean, whether we go off into pairs or whether we have four and you circle the block, basically I'm going to draw out different blocks and then when you come soul winning, you just need to head to a block, right? And then just knock around that block. And then once that block's done, we'll go onto a different block. 
So we're changing that up slightly. Um, what else did I want to show you? So if you haven't already, download the app and then get the login information from here. Uh, just a couple of points on adding a pin. Now obviously adding a pin is really straightforward, right? You just touch anywhere on the map. But what, one thing I want you to note is, is the way Spotio works right now, and obviously it might change in the future, is the position, the point that you actually touch on the map, I don't even realize this, that's the point that the pin actually drops. Right? So it must be that Spotio is programmed in a way that where you touch, it takes that longitude and latitude coordinate and then it drops that pin, which is a really good change that they did because the way it used to work is you would, you would touch the map, then Google would give you the address and then when it dropped the pin, it would drop the pin wherever Google thought that address was and it might just be like somewhere random, right? And you know on Google Maps, sometimes the building is like here, but then the address is like over here. So it's good now that you can actually touch on the actual building, on the actual square on the map, and then drop a pin actually there. So keep that in mind. So when, wherever you press on the map, that's where that pin um, actually drops. And then what you want to make sure as well when you're adding a pin, the, the address that Google pulls up, you want to make sure that's correct. Because you, know, you might be at 96 Sproul Street, right? But then when you've pressed 96 Sproul Street on the map, it actually pulled up 98 Sp Sproul Street and then now you're going to put the wrong address in the wrong location on the map. So a few things to keep in mind. Wherever you touch on the map is where the pin's going to drop and ch always check the address. Check the address is the actual house that you're knocking on because then otherwise it messes things up, right? And then if you need to edit it, you just need to click on the address, edit the number and whatnot and edit it. So you want to press where that address actually is and then edit it to that number. So say you're at 96, you press on 96, it pulls up 98. You want to then change it to 96 so that you know, your pin is in the right location. Um, and then you obviously you'll, you'll fill out the different forms. So what I've also put on here is just an explanation of uh, the different statuses, right? So here. And then you can see that on the, on the website. So not home is self-explanatory, but we also use not home for when, uh, like say, obviously somebody's home but they just don't answer, we just put that as not home. But also if the house is under construction, you know, sometimes you go to a house and it's like under construction or it's vacant, put that as not home as well because obviously somebody's going to live there eventually, right? So if you're wondering how to mark those houses, you know, um, put those as not home. Not interested is if they're not willing to take a tract from you. Um, and I've got it all here as well. So gave a tract, so the person was happy to take a gospel tract. We also use it when they let you just say, like, you know, sometimes you'll knock on a door and then, you know, you, you, they, they might say, oh, you know, they'll take the track, they don't have time, but you might say, hey, just let me leave you with one Bible verse, or can I just leave you with a thought? That's also just gave a tract, right? So that hasn't moved up to brief discussion yet. So gave a tract is if they accept the tract, even if you don't get to talk to them, but it's also if you just get to say, like, you know, 15, 30 second spiel, that's also gave a tract. Now, a brief discussion is when you, there's a bit of back and forth, right? So the person might have asked a couple of questions, but they didn't really let you open the Bible, go through it, talk to them. That's brief discussion. Long discussion is when you actually, there's a lot of interaction, you get to show them the plan of salvation, or you get to go over a lot of objections and questions with them, you know? So you might, they might be familiar with the gospel, you might have spent a lot of time talking about eternal security, you might have spent a lot of time talking about other things, you know, they're familiar with the gospel, they understand that salvation by grace, but they're a Catholic, and you're talking to them about, you know, Mary, and you're talking to them about communion and things like that. That's fine to put that as a long discussion as well, right? Because we've already confirmed that they understand the gospel and now we're trying to water that seed, trying to get them saved. Um, now, follow-up is not saved. One thing you want to keep in mind, right now, this status is just used as a reminder for yourself. Obviously, if somebody's going to want, you know, if somebody is willing to be followed up, you know, my suggestion would be to get a number or an email from them. Don't just say follow-up and I'll come back next week. And, and one way you can ask for it that's not sort of too invasive um, that I learned from Mark Tossel is he, he would say, um, hey, do you want me to let you know before I come? You know, do you want me to contact you before I come? And obviously if they say yes, then they're going to have to give you a way for them to contact them, right? So uh, if somebody says, hey, you know, we can come back next week, you can come back another time, you say, well, you know, is next week okay? You can say, hey, you know, can I, can I contact you before I come just to make sure you're here? 
And if they don't, if they say, no, no, I'm just here, then they probably don't want to be followed up on. But if they say, yeah, yeah, take my number, then th th that's they're obviously a bit more interested and they're willing to give you their details. So if, they if it's follow up and then I'll say, yeah, make sure you get a contact number and an email. Um, maybe in the future, uh, when I have more time, you know, maybe when I'm a full-time um, bishop, uh, we might use these follow-up statuses where if somebody it doesn't mind, it, like it, even if you can't follow them up, if they don't mind being contacted by somebody, as long as you get me a phone number or an email, I'll call them and try and meet up with them. So that might be something I do in the future if I have more time and, you know, it's probably, because right now all of us work, but when we start having full-time workers, uh, we can actually do that, right? Because there can be that expectation where, you know, you guys sort of help find out where these people are and then I'll, I'll go in for the kill kind of thing. I'll try and get them. Um, so, that's, so that's a follow-up. So saved, saved is when somebody calls upon the name of the Lord. So the, the status, you know, I understand and I've put here, you know, obviously it's possible for people to get saved without praying with you or without praying out loud, right? Because it's between them and God. But for the purpose of this status, we're just saying, hey, it's when they're willing to pray with you, right? They're willing to pray with you. That's the person that we count as saved. Otherwise, we just put them as a long discussion, heard the gospel. Um, already saved is somebody that's you know, obviously already saved because we just wanted to distinguish between the people that our church led to the Lord and the people that were already saved. And then we have follow-up of those two as well so we can differentiate the two. Now there's a pin as well that's church member. You know, you can see here, church member. So that's where we live, right? So if, if your pin's not already on the map, you can go in there and add it. You know, just add it on your house, you know, as a church member. Um, hopefully we get more of those in this area as our church gets more influence. I've been talking to Michael and we were talking about, hey, you know, when we think about our door knocking ministry, um, you know, it's already been almost three years. Are we going to keep going further out or are we going to start thinking about re-canvassing the area? And I think probably at three year mark, we'll probably start over again. You know, we'll start in Punchbowl and we'll sort of do this, these suburbs again rather than driving out 15, 20 minutes. Because, you know, obviously we want to reach this immediate area as much as we can and, and go back and follow up on them. But also, um, you know, obviously as more soul winners get involved in the door knocking, hopefully, that'll naturally make that radius a bit further if we just set a time frame and whatnot. Now the commercial status is when there's a, there's a business, right? So, there's, so definitely mark this, if you're knocking a street, and it's like house, house, and then there's three or four businesses. Mark those as businesses, because then we know that there's businesses there. Like, because there might be a street full of businesses or full of commercial property, and then we won't go back there again, right? So we don't have to waste our time going back and canvassing that area, knowing already that's businesses. So you can see now how Spotio can be used to make our soul winning a lot more efficient, right? Because then we, we start to get an idea of where to go, you know? And even when we look at blocks right we can look at blocks that have more gray they weren't home let's try that block again right because those people weren't actually there so i want you to just sort of buy into this vision of why we're using it so that you can see how it'll help us be more effective as soul winners so that's what commercial is for language barrier is if you get the idea that you could have spoken to them if you spoke that language so they're not necessarily not interested you just couldn't speak their language otherwise they might have spoken to you uh, and when you put a language barrier down uh, make sure you fill out on the form as well, like what language they speak. And aggressive is somebody that, you know, either, either openly like told you to get lost or you think if you were to come back, they would be upset, right? So we just mark those as aggressive. Basically, we're black, blacklisting those people, right? So if they, they reject God, then, you know, God rejects them, right? We're not going to go back. If they don't want us to be there, um, you know, we're not going to um, upset them. Uh, now, going into the, to the form fields, I've simplified it a lot. So... I just want to show you because I used to have it a lot more complicated. I've just simplified it a bit because really they weren't really being used. So I've just got them down to the ones that I think we'll use now. And even when I go soul winning, generally when I speak to somebody at the door, the, the two extra points of information that I think are useful is basically the language that they speak and the religion that they are, right? So I want you to keep in, this in mind that, you know, you know, we're kind of surveying our area as well, right? If we want to be more effective at reaching this area, we're kind of surveying it at the same time. So let's say you talk to somebody and they mention that they go to an Orthodox church. 
but you know, they just took the track. Don't just mark it as gave a tract and that's it. Put, put in there that, you know, that they were orthodox under, under religion. So I've put here, you can see, uh, obviously that's their contact details, but you can see here that the religion, if I press that, they, I've just listed a whole bunch of different religions, right? Different, different denominations and whatnot. If there's one that you think should be in there, then let me know and then I'll add it, right? But if, if it's not in there, then that's why I've given you this field, fill in if religion not listed. Then I can look at that data later and I can see if there's a common religion that just keeps getting listed. I can add it to the, the options, right? And it's the same with language. So I've list, I remember I looked online at just like all the you know, highest spoken languages and I just put them all in there. But if there's not one in there, that's when you can use the fill in if language not listed. Now, I used to have all these comments and different names, but because people aren't always consistent going soul winning and the names always change, you know, people came to church, people left church, whatnot. So I just, I just took that all away and I just made it the one field again, just notes. So notes is there. If there's some information that you think is interesting or relevant, if you were to come back and talk to that person again, you can just write it in the notes. You don't have to sign it off. It doesn't really matter who, who wrote it in. I mean, if we ever speak to that person again and say, you know, who, was that look, who, who what did that guy look like? Oh, was, he, was he tall with a, with a moustache and had like a European accent? We go, ah, that's Michael, <laughs> right? So just, just simplified it a bit. So try and fill out as much as you can. Um, you know, if, if obviously if somebody, you know, they didn't speak the language, put the language in, if they have the religion, just, just keep that in mind. Just put as much information in as you can because when we re-knock the area, it's, it, that information is going to help us, right, to be more effective where to go and whatnot. A uh, couple other things, just two more things on Spotio. So one thing that Spotio did is there's something called an apartment pin. So basically with an apartment pin, if, if you have uh, you know, an apartment block, that's where the unit comes in, right? So I'll show you here. We'll do it here on number 71. So if I touch 71, and I put a pin down. Let's say, let's say this is an apartment, but it's not really an apartment. I'll just say it's apartment one. Let's just say they went home. Okay. So you see exactly where I touched is where that pin drops. So now if I want to create an apartment pin, uh, and obviously Spotio could do this a lot better, but the way you do it is you just got to touch the address again, just anywhere. So I touched on 71. Sorry? Yeah, you might not be able to see it because it's gray. Can you see where that one is? No. Oh. Sorry, on, on my screen it's there. Yeah. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make the next one a different color. Oh. Let's see, I'll change it. Maybe I'll put it dark blue. There you go. Um, so if I touch on the map again, right, it's going to ask me because it can already see that there's a pin at that address. So I want to change the address and then I'll put unit two. And then when I put unit two, I'll just say on discussion, you'll see now that there's this apartment pin. So it looks like an apartment block. And if I press on that, now you'll see that there's one unit one and unit two. So that's how you do apartment. So, so what, you know, I, I generally don't use it for duplexes, but it doesn't really matter. Like if a duplex, you put unit A, unit B, and it's the one pin. But I do use it definitely for apartments. So based on the building, so I try and create one pin, one apartment pin for the building. Um, I also use it for like a housing complex. You know, sometimes you're in a retirement village or, you know, where it's like, it's kind of like one address, but there's many houses rather than trying to find the house on the map and marking that unit. Um, you know, I just put the one pin for that unit. So I remember in the Sunshine Coast, I just knocked this one unit of like 28 townhouses and I just created the one pin and just put on 28 just so the map's not just completely filled with all these pins. So once you have an apartment pin, it's really easy to add new apartments, right? So you see that plus button there? So that's how I just add additional apartments, right? So if I put plus, then I can put apartment three, you know, say not home, you know, and then so on and so forth. So what this really helps is, because like, I don't know, you know, I know it's not never pleasant sort of buzzing an apartment block. It's kind of like, you know, you're calling each person, but you know, we have to do it, right? And there's so many times where people have let us in, you know, and we've gotten people saved, people talk to. So, you know, I guess it's very tedious, but just think of it more like efficient, right? Because instead of having to walk to the next house, you just got to buzz the next door, right? 
But what, what, this, what this helps with is if you, as you're buzzing, it actually helps you keep track of where you're up to. But also, once you finish that apartment block, you can look back and you can, when you, when you go to the letterbox, you know exactly which letterbox to put gospel tracks into, right? Because the people that are not interested, you skip over. So now you can just scroll down that list and this is what me and Michael do, right? We'll, we'll buzz an apartment block, we keep track of who says yay, who says yay, who says nay. And then when we go to the uh, mailbox, we can just look back over it and go, and we're just working through and put it into the letterbox. And then we skip the ones of the people that said not interested. So that's how you do an apartment. The last thing I just want to cover on Spotio is um, people on the street. So how do you mark somebody on the street? Because say you're, say you're door knocking, right? You're going down the street and you're door knocking and then um, you, you, you actually stop somebody on the street, right? So you don't actually meet them in a the house. How do you mark that pin? Well, me and Michael, we have, we have a way that we mark those pins and I'm not sure whether you, you're aware of how we mark those pins. But the way we mark it is basically the, the location that you meet that person, you use that house number, right? So let's say, for example, I put here 10. So let's say I, I meet somebody on 10 Sproul Street outside the front of 10 Sproul Street, right? So remember, wherever you touch on the map is where that pin drops. So what I'm going to do is I will, I will drop a pin, for example, let's say I meet him in front of 67 Sproul Street, right? So I'll, I'll touch... I'll touch just in front on, the, on where the street is on Sproul Street. It brings up 67 Sproul Street. So that, that address is right. I'm in front of 67 Sproul Street. I've just preached the gospel to somebody. Now I'm going to drop that pin, right? So what I do is... Oh, sorry. There you go. So I've, I've, so I've touched the map on the street, right? I've selected the status. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put ST after the number. So now it thinks that it's like a, a duplex, right? Like a different building. So it's, then it's 67 in front of the street. And if you talk to two people and three people and whatnot, it'll just start creating like an apartment pin, right? Or whatnot. Or you could put, I think Michael puts ST1, ST2. If you've talked to multiple people, you know, if he's, if he's talking to multiple people in front of that house. So when I save that now, see, notice where the pin is. The pin is actually on the street. So if you put ST after the number, it actually saves that pin onto the street. And then we can keep track of those numbers too. So that's how you keep track of people that you stop along the way, if you're wondering how to do that. That's how we've been doing it. Now, if it changes, I'll let you guys know and I'll update that article online. But if you're ever, obviously you might not remember all this. So to refresh your memory, remember tcip.org.au slash spodio. And that's all the information that I went through with you today. Okay. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully this just gets us all on the same page on how we're using it. And if, you know, obviously I'll have to do this every now and then, but I'm hoping that I can just refer people to that article and um, that helps.